Get the latest movie reviews, Hollywood news, and inside views. It's time for Behind the Screens with Lights, Lights Camera, Camera Jackson, Jackson on 1077 GNA. All right, listen, nobody knows more about films, what's happening, what's happening in Hollywood. He takes us behind the screens every Friday morning. Our professional film critic, Lights Camera Jackson. Good morning, Jax. Happy Friday, buddy. How are you? I'm um, great. What's up, guys? This might be the segment of the summer. you got to stay tuned for these next five or six minutes because we are going through some big things right now. Oh, All right. Love do it. we want to start with uh, the movies opening up this weekend, Crazy Rich Asians, which we're seeing a lot of promos for and a lot of hype. Is this funny? Is this a good film? It is a good film. There were sneak preview screenings on Wednesday, and this film actually doesn't open until next Wednesday, but I'm giving you a a little early review because this is a good film. This is a film people are going to be talking about. It's based on a very popular novel. It's a romance movie. You've got a young Chinese-American woman who travels to Singapore with her boyfriend to meet his family, attend a friend's wedding, and you've got the mother character who kind of disapproves of this romance because of certain things. It is a very nice film, and it treats the Asian culture with such honor and respect. It's also got these lush costumes, the music, the vibe of the film. It's not outrageous crazy like the title suggests. It's a really nice, sweet summer romance. It's going to have a lot of people talking. Is it funny at all? A little bit. There are some minor characters that try to add some over-the-top humor, but to me, it's the sophisticated romance, how it's taken so seriously and so sweetly that really makes this film work. All right, I'm seeing a lot of trailers for The Meg, which is short for Megalodon, which is like the prehistoric great white shark, I guess, which uh, there's always some theories as to whether or not they still may may or may not exist. Uh, To me, this looks awful. Uh, because like you've it's done, like we, Sharknado. there's NATO. Yeah, like there's Jaws, and then that's it. Like right. when you make Rocky, you can't make Rocky again. You could probably make a decent boxing film, right? But I don't think you can recreate the magic that was Jaws. Does the Meg try to do that, and did they come close? Uh, they don't really come close. Look, we've had a lot of shark attack movies over the last couple of years. The Shallows with Blake Lively, 47 meters down. Now the Meg. It's Jason Statham versus a shark. That's basically all you got to know going in. And it tries to be energetic, but it's really, it's not scary or dramatic, and it's not campy like the Sharknado movies. It's consistently flat, basically, for an hour and 50 minutes, and it gets off to a really slow start. It takes like a half hour just to get going. A few moments where you kind of chuckle at the insanity of Jason Statham, but I, uh, uh, you know, fighting this shark, but I wanted so much more of that. I don't recommend you see the Meg this weekend. All right, let's talk about some of the changes to the Oscars, too. You think this stuff could be monumental? I, I really do, and here's the thing. This most popular film c- category edition, that's the one people are really going after. You know, uh, all these blockbuster movies getting nominated as a sympathy vote, all of that. Here's, I think, the one way the Academy can spin this and save themselves, because so far it has been a PR nightmare since this announcement. You don't make it a, a, a multiple-choice award thing that's on, that the public votes on. You make it a special award, and you call this every year they name a film that has a specific impact on popular culture and on society that has had the greatest impact. It can be in terms of of money. It can be in terms of uh, catchphrases and various things. Everybody has been saying Wakanda forever since Black Panther has come out. We know Black Panther will probably win this award come February. Just spin it so that you honor one film a year that has had a great impact on popular culture and society. And to me, if you spin it like that, it's actually not that bad. So, but I explain to people too what the the announced change was though because i think there's a lot of people not really sure what exactly we're referring to it's the addition of a a category honoring popular films popular in quotes blockbuster movies because many blockbuster films films that make the most money don't usually get nominated for the big awards yet we have seen a little bit of that over the last several years right so they they it looks like to me ABC demanded this change. That's what they've been saying. They demanded that they move uh, not this coming year's show, but the following year's show up in terms of the award season and make the show three hours max. ABC went to the Academy and said, we really want you to make these changes. Otherwise, this show is going to go down the toilet in three to five years. And so they want this popular film category so that 
more people can root for films they may have seen in advance and things like that. I think they got to spin this this direction, and it may be able to save face for the Academy. Otherwise, Oscar lived a nice 90 years. He so, really did. I, I don't understand. So are they are they doing away with Best Picture? No, they added a category. So they no, added most popular. they're this category yeah. to be okay. a 25th. But if they make it, spe- they do special Academy Awards every year. They honor them at the Governor's Awards. If they make this a special award and not specifically a 25th category, I think think it can work. All right, let's talk to you about uh, Showtime announced this week that they're going to be uh, airing uh, the eight-part series, which is all about uh, the prison escape from Danamora that we were all captivated by in the summer of 2015. Do you know any more about this? We know it's directed by Ben Stiller, a million local ties. And what are your thoughts on this, when it airs, and if it actually looks pretty good? Yeah, I watched the trailer. It's got a good cast. It does have a great cast. Who's in the Sicario movie, Paul Dano, Patricia Arquette, and Bonnie Hunt. And Bonnie Hunt really hasn't done a whole lot lately besides a little voice work in Cars 3 and then not much since her talk show in the Cheaper by the Dozen movies. It's nice to see Bonnie Hunt. It premieres Sunday, November 18th at 10 p.m. November is a ratings period. It is a big time frame going into the holidays. So that'll be pretty good. Maybe they'll try to get it up for some Golden Globe and Critics' Choice Awards Mm. consideration for sure. All right, great stuff, Jackson. If people want more from you, how can they do that, bud? My full Crazy Rich Asians review is up right now, lights-camera-jackson.com. I'm back on Twitter at LCJ Reviews, and also follow me on Instagram at LightsCamJackson. Have a great weekend, buddy. We'll talk to you next Friday. Thank you. You you too. Bye-bye.